So, for the last few videos, we've been doing a lot of biology. Today, we're going to change things up by looking at some physics featuring America's favourite cartoon family that isn't the Belchers. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Science Of, where today, we're going to be looking at the science behind the Simpsons movie. I've been a long time fan of the Simpsons, as so many people are. I've listened to the commentaries, read the comics, and like most people, I've seen the steady declining its quality over the years. Now, if you're not aware of the Simpsons movie, I'm just going to be putting a quick spoiler warning up here for a movie that's almost 15 years old. The Simpsons movie focuses on Springfield being contained in a dome by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, due to its dangerous levels of pollution. The Simpsons family manages to escape the dome, and the rest of the movie focuses on the family's attempts to escape the EPA and try to save the rest of Springfield. Pigs, Emperor Moe, and antics ensue. There's a lot that we could discuss with this movie. How long the Springfieldians could survive with such high levels of pollution in the dome, and how they could be affected by it. Whether Plopper could fill up an entire silo in a matter of days, or how many Springfieldians it would take to lift up a car. But today, I'm going to focus on the climax of the film, where Homer has to toss a bomb set to blow up Springfield out of the dome before it goes off. Using his Chekhov's gun ability of being able to ride a motorbike around a ball of death earlier on in the movie. So what we're going to do is look at the physics in the ball of death and see how that would scale up to the dome at the end of the movie. In case you don't remember, or just don't care about the spoiler warnings, the Simpsons travel to a carnival where Homer won a truck by riding a motorbike around a ball of death. This is a common carnival stunt which originated in 1901 as the Cycle Whirl, which was a cycling stunt whereby cyclists performed in a half dome rather than a full dome. What this means is we're looking at circular motion, and there are two kinds of forces which act in a circle. Centrifugal force, which is the outward force on a mass when rotated. This is the force applied when you're riding a ride like this. Keeping you pushed against the outside of the ride while stopping you from falling or being thrown out even when it's tilted with a hydraulic arm. Centripetal forces, on the other hand, are the forces necessary to keep an object moving in a circular path, directed inwards towards the central point of rotation. The physics in this stunt are actually pretty interesting, as all of the riders inside of the ball are acting against gravity, thanks to centripetal force. In order to calculate centripetal force, you use a simple equation. Fc equals m times v squared divided by r. In this equation, Fc is the centripetal force, m is the mass of the object, which in this case will be Homer plus the weight of a bike, v is the velocity at which the object is moving, and r is the radius of the circular path. Now, fortunately, we get several looks at the dome with Homer inside from a frontal perspective, which means it'll be pretty easy to get our radius. We know that Homer is roughly 6 feet tall, and he's tall enough to steady the bike when he's on it, so we can assume that the height of Homer plus the bike is around 6 feet. From this, we can find that the ball of death is about 23 feet in diameter, or roughly 7 meters. What about the mass though? Well, we just need to combine Homer's mass with the mass of the bike. Homer's mass has fluctuated a lot throughout the series, so what I'm going to do is use Homer's starting weight from Season 7, Episode 7, King Size Homer. The episode where Homer tries to become hyper-obese so he can work from home on disability. His starting weight, as shown through a fantasy sequence, is 239 pounds or 108 kilograms. But that's not the only mass we need to consider we also need to consider the mass of the bike Homer's riding. In general, motorbikes weigh between 300 and 400 pounds, so let's take a median and say 350. Added to Homer's 239, we have a total mass of 267.16 kilograms, which is going to require a lot of force to get around the ball of death. But what about his velocity? Well, hopefully you're aware of the equation speed equals distance divided by time. And we can use something similar for circular motion, using the circle's circumference as the distance. Circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius of the circle. This gives us the equation, velocity is equal to 2 times pi times the radius of the sphere, divided by the time taken to get around it. We already know the radius is 3.5 meters, so all we need is the time. For this, what I'll use is 2 times the time taken for Homer to travel halfway round a ball of death. 
From this, we get a time of 1.5 seconds. So let's put this into our equation to get our circular velocity. So that's 2 times pi times 3.5 all divided by 1.5. This gives us a circular velocity of 14.66 meters per second or roughly 32 miles per hour. Great, so now we have our velocity, so now we can work out our centripetal force. So the centripetal force is equal to 267.16 multiplied by 14.66 squared divided by 3.5. This gives us a total centripetal force of 16,404.81 newtons. Now that's quite a lot of force, just over the weight of a Borneo pygmy elephant. But what does it mean for Homer's trip around a dome? Well, to figure this out, we need to figure out the force of gravity acting on the bike and Homer. We've calculated this before in the science of Ratchet and Clank, which you can view over here. All we need to do is multiply the mass of Homer and the bike by the gravitational field strength of the Earth, which is 9.81 newtons. From this, we get a gravitational force of 2620.83 newtons. But we don't only have to consider the gravitational force, we also have to consider what is known as the normal force. As Newton's third law states, for every action in nature, there will always be an equal and opposing reaction. In other words, object A exerts a force on object B. In that case, object B will exert an equal and opposing force on object A. This applies even when an object is just resting on a surface. In this case, at the top of the globe of death, Homer and his bike will be exerting a force upwards onto the surface of the globe, and the globe will exerting a force back onto Homer and the bike. This force is calculated the same way as the gravitational force, meaning that we have a normal force of 2620.83 newtons. From these forces, we can then see how accurate the velocity we calculated would be. When Homer is at the top of the dome, we would expect the centripetal force to be equal to the sum of the normal force and the gravitational force. This means that the centripetal force should be 5,241.66 for Homer to successfully make his way around a globe, significantly less than 16,000 newtons calculated previously. So why was our value so high? Well, it was due to the high circular velocity. What we got from normal and gravitational forces was the minimum value of the centripetal force. And using this, we could find the minimum speed that Homer and the bike would have to go to make a complete trip around a dome. The moment that Homer slows down enough at the top of the globe that he falls, the normal force will be reduced down to zero as there will be no force exerted on the globe. From this, we find that the centripetal force would be equal to the gravitational force or 2620.83 newtons. From this, we do a lot of equation rearranging until we get to velocity being equal to the square root of the gravitational constant multiplied by the radius of the sphere. Plugging our numbers into this equation gives us a minimum velocity of 5.78 meters per second or 12.93 miles per hour. Any velocity higher than that and Homer would easily make it around a dome. What we can do now is look at the movie's finale. After many failed attempts by the people of Springfield to escape the dome, Russ Cargill, head of the EPA, lowers a bomb into Springfield to create a controlled explosion to get rid of the town and save the world from an environmental catastrophe. It's here where the Chekhov's gun of Homer's experience in the globe of death comes back, as he and Bart ride around the interior surface of the dome to get rid of the bomb. Naturally, they succeed, and Russ Cargill ends up being knocked out and possibly killed by Maggie. Now, of course, it shouldn't be surprising that Homer riding a motorbike over a dome thousands of meters in diameter is a little bit unrealistic. But just how unrealistic is it? Let's work out the minimum velocity needed to make it round a dome. The important thing to note is that the acceleration due to gravity is constant on Earth, remaining 9.81 no matter what. The only thing that will influence how fast Homer and Bart will need to go is the size of the dome. The bigger the dome, the faster Homer would need to go. The size of the bike, Homer and Bart's combined weight, that doesn't matter. So, how big is Springfield? Well, for this, we can look for the real world equivalent of Springfield. In an interview with the Smithsonian Magazine in 2012, Simpsons creator Matt Groening said that Springfield was named after Springfield, Oregon. So what we can do is see how big a dome would have to be to cover it and go from there. 
When looking on Google Maps, it was found that Springfield was roughly 16 miles or 25.7 kilometers long. This means that a dome to surround the entire city would have a radius of 12.87 kilometers. So now that we have our radius, it's simple to calculate the minimum speed Homer would need to reach to move around the dome. So the velocity is equal to the square root of 9.81 multiplied by 12,870 meters. This gives us a minimum velocity of an astounding 355 meters per second or 794 miles per hour. That's faster than the speed of sound, which is 343 meters per second. To put this into perspective, the all-time land speed record is currently held by the Thrust SSC, which reached speeds as high as 763 miles per hour, breaking the sound barrier, but still too slow to get all the way around Springfield's dome. Okay, so in conclusion, Homer and Bart just wouldn't have been able to save Springfield. If anything, it should be a new Grand Canyon being promoted to us by Tom Hanks. Even with Bart's extra mass, it wouldn't have been enough to get the bike halfway up the side of the dome. So there we go. If you have any particular scientific subject or topic you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. Or, if you'd rather, send me a message directly on Twitter. I'm definitely going to come back to The Simpsons at some point because they've covered so much over the course of their 32 years on our TV screens. Ranging from nuclear power and how it mutates the environment in two cars in every garage and three eyes on every fish, to whether Springs would be able to stop a ship from sinking long enough to save passengers on board from the old man and the sea student. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to keep up to date on all science of videos. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for game based content then you can join me over on Toggle Jam Plays where every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday I show off a different game. Or if you want to support the channel even further you could also contribute to my Patreon where you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all videos as well as being able to vote on what the next science of video will be. But until then this has been the science of the Simpsons movie. I'll see you next time.